Hey guys, it's Lisa, and today we're going to go over 10 makeup products I think every woman over 50 needs. But I want to share with you some products that I think are easy, mature skin friendly, are little things that help you look younger and more fresh, and simple. Now, I ended up putting some lashes on and you know, I usually go a little bit overboard, but that is because this is my thing and I love makeup. I was thinking it would be like if you asked a cook, Martha Stewart, or pick your chef, Laura Vitale, if you asked a cook, what are the basic pots and pans? You know, they're gonna give you the double boiler in case you make fudge or something like that. You know, they're gonna give you the extras. I tried to narrow it down to just the basics. And today I'm partnering with Nordstrom and Nordstrom Beauty to bring you some special offers that they have going on through the month of April and May, including some gifts with purchase, three times the points on beauty, I will link all of the information down below and I will have a link where you can go read about all of the beauty offers, gifts with purchase, all of that good stuff, especially for you Nordstrom card members. Don't forget that the Nordstrom sale is coming up and the Nordstrom card members get to shop first. Okay, so let's start with something that I forgot to show you when I was putting on this makeup today, and that is a good lip conditioner. Now, I'm not saying you need this one. This one is the La Mer, and I've enjoyed it. I paid up for it, so I'm gonna use it up, and I've about gotten to that point. It's been a good one. I will say I do like the one in the pot a little bit better, but if you are a fingernail girl, you will appreciate things with a wand. So I would say this is a good one, but there are many good ones. But I do think a lip conditioner really helps because what happens when we age? Our lips start shriveling up and get dry. That's for sure. Okay, I have, I'm 53, and I still have oily skin. Normal, combo, sometimes just flat out oily. So a lot of the things that I use are geared towards oily skin. Even with that said, I love this little primer. It is from Iconic London, it's called Underglow. And because I do use foundations that are geared towards long lasting, medium to full coverage, humidity proof, budge proof, and for oily skin, I like to put this underneath. And that way, everything glides so pretty over it. I don't put a thick layer, I just put one little dropper full. But most foundations that I love look really good over this. And I really think it's all about the glow, but if you're like me, you have to control it and tell your face exactly where you want the glow to be. So that is what I use this for, and it is beautiful. Foundations, that is one of those things. If you have beautiful skin with not a lot of redness, not a lot of melasma or anything like that, then you probably don't need a foundation or maybe you just need a powder or maybe you just need a tinted moisturizer. That is not the case with me. I don't have any darkness, acne, melasma. A lot of that is due to just prescription strength skincare, but I do have redness and I could probably do something about it, but I just prefer, I love makeup anyway. I know I'm going to wear makeup, so I just go with my makeup. I would say my top three at this moment would be this Lancome Tint Idol, Estee Lauder Double Wear, and Hourglass Ambient. Today I use this because it is a little bit lighter than the other two. I would say it's this, then I would say Estee Lauder Double Wear, and then I would say the Hourglass is probably my most full coverage. And of course, you can adjust how much you use. Today, I did use a little bit more if you see me putting it out on the sponge because this one has a really small, like the pump is a little pump, and I was using a new sponge. So that takes a little bit more. But as I look at it right now, I think you can still see my skin through it just a little bit more than with the Hourglass and a little bit more than usual. And I did use concealer. Now, I remember the day where I used concealer first to camouflage my dark spots, and then I went in with the foundation. So if you need to do that, do that. But I, at this point, just go in with a concealer just to brighten up under my eyes and to give my face dimension. That is another thing. If you're gonna use a foundation that is 
medium to full coverage, then you're gonna want to put those different colors and those different shades and the dimension back in your skin. If you just go with a blank heavy foundation, then it's gonna look like blank heavy foundation. But if you go in with all of these different things, you're mimicking what your skin would look like if it were perfect. So if I had to say two concealers that I think, I'm thinking of every one of you out there, all women over 50. I really think this Charlotte Tilbury concealer, it has a little bit more coverage than the NARS. But both of these are not very creasy, not really heavy coverage, yet they still are good. They still give you the brightness. They still give you the coverage. They give me what I want without being full on. I think NARS is a go-to. I go between several different colors. I will say Custard has been a good one for a long time. And I just came across this one, which is Conlichi and I like it. It's a little bit lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the second tube of this 6.5 medium. You know, the shades will change according, according to your skin, of course. Okay, this is something that is, again, according to the look that you like and the formula that you like, etc., etc. But I really think it's important, no matter what, to powder your T-zone. Now, I have never had dry skin. So if this, you're thinking, no way in the world am I ever going to powder my skin, then I understand. I've never had that experience. Even as a, I think in junior high, which was seventh, eighth, ninth grade, and completely through high school, I always had a compact in my purse. I was always that girl in the class or in the bathroom just powdering the oily spot. So I really think powder is necessary, especially like right here, right here, and to set your concealer. I like to go in with a loose powder. This one is the Givenchy in the color Rose. This one gives more of that brightening effect. If you're kind of sketched out by the pink color, go with number two, just the vanilla. I'm not sure it's vanilla, just the number two. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's just kind of a vanilla type color. I do like that. If you want something very simple, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder, what is it called? Airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Micro Powder. This is a good one. This is shade two. I would say this is just like a good go-to for many, many, many skin tones. I have seen people set under their eyes with this with a brush. I have used this all over and I will say this is a go-to when I have hit three o'clock, four o'clock. The other night I went out to dinner with a couple of friends and we were meeting at 5.30. So I would take this with a brush and just hit my T-zone. This is one of those powders you can take with you. Now, if you want more of a glow and say you are more of a dry skin girl, then this one, this Sisley, oh my goodness. I discovered this when I was in Dallas. It's the Blur Expert and this is the number one beige. And it is my go-to powder. Today, I just used it all over. I've already put my brush up, but I swirl my brush in it and just go all over. And it gives you that glow and it takes away the shine. It's very unique. And I think it does blur. This is a good one, but it is a little bit more expensive. Okay, let's go to bronzer. I don't use bronzer in the bronzing up my skin kind of way, but if you do, then I still think you would like the powder one that I chose. If you're like me and you want to kind of contour your face, here again, put some more emphasis on your cheekbones, we have to go with the shape of our face. So you may not do it exactly like I do, but I'm sure at this point in your life, you know what you like. Like some people would rather have their bronzer going kind of up and under their eyes and maybe more straight across. I do think a lot of it has to do with our face shape, but if you want to try a cream bronzer that will not make your skin oily, it is not too glowy, ooey gooey, anything, this Chanel Universal. And this color is the Deep Bronze. It looks a lot darker than it comes off. This is a side I did with the Bronzer Universal. And one of my 
all time must have brushes. Honestly, I think you guys just no matter what, everybody needs this brush. I have like five of them. Whenever I hit a sale somewhere, I pick up one of these brushes because not only can you do cream products like this, you and I should have used this end to show you the eyeshadow that I used today, but I did not think about it. So when you see me doing the eyeshadow, remember you can use this. It's very good for that. So this on this side is the Chanel bronzer. And then on this side, if you are more of a powder person, I really, really am loving this YSL All Hours Hyper Bronze. Now, the first time I showed this to you, I got number three and it is very tawny. It's got a lot of that, I just think of Miami. You know what I mean? It's got a lot of that J-Lo glow look to it. This is a little bit more subdued and a little bit more contoured bronzer look. And I just remembered I never did contour my nose today, which I'm not trying to make my nose look slimmer because it already is very slim. I just, like I said, like putting that dimension back into my face like that and then a lot of times I'll go right on the end like that okay <laughs> back to the program this one is a good one you know I always will have benefit hula but benefit hula is very matte not saying that I don't like that but this one doesn't have shimmer but it is more of a satiny finish so these are just fabulous. Blush, I know so many women don't wear blush. And you know, I kind of get it, but I think if you find the right tone and the right shade with just a little bit of shimmer, I do think it can really like bring your look alive. And that is how I feel about this blush. This is the Cheek to Chic in the Climax. And as you can tell, it doesn't have a lot of color to it. It's going to be more a little bit of bronze and a little bit of peach. So I like to grab a big fluffy brush, swish it in there, and hit the tops of my cheeks. And you will notice that as you're doing these steps, it's bringing your features out, which is what makeup is supposed to do. It is giving you dimension. It is just bringing you to life. And I think that's the secret because as we age, it just seems like everything shrinks, drops, and fades. <laughs> and so we're trying to lift, brighten, and enhance our faces, but not go over the top. And I do think, you know, I like a really makeup-y makeup look, but I do like it to just enhance my features. Like I don't like bright pink blush. I don't like bright red lipstick. Okay, so let's get into lipstick. My favorite, favorite subject. Lip liner. I just did a whole video on lip liners and why I think it is just the most underrated product for aging women over 40 and 50. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. It is just a good go to if you only had one lip liner lip liner i know a lot of people talk about pillow talk i think pillow talk might be good if you're very fair i'm not fair enough for that to show but i do like new iconic nude so i'm going to go over just a little bit to enhance now why do you think you need a lip liner? I would say one of the biggest things to me is as we age, the space between your nose and your lip really lengthens. And it's because our face is dropping. If you put that lip liner on, it instantly makes that area look smaller. It instantly takes away from your lip lines. It keeps your lipstick from feathering into those lip lines. It brings your shape of your lips back. Remember, like if you look at a child, you can see the exact, like you can see the exact rim of their lips. It's so beautiful. But as we get older, even that starts to fade. So it's just bringing your lips back to life as you use the lip liner. Now don't go under your lip line. Go a little bit, how can I say this? Like if you were, if there were a curb in a car, you would want your tire to be on the, the, the curb, not over, not under. You want your tire on the curb. <laughs> 
That's the best thing I can think of. I may even like my tire a little tilted that way. But here again, it's the look that you like. This is a good waxy formula and it just seems to stay. And it's, it's loved by many for sure. Okay, lip color. I understand if you are not a lipstick girl or a lip gloss. So I've brought three good options I think would work for most people. Now, the other day I was watching a young girl. Uh, she's in her 30s, young 30s, early 30s. And she put on a dark lipstick and she said, this one makes me look much older. And I was like, yes. It was so good to hear someone say that. I really think when we're older, if we wear bright, not even bright, dark lipstick, it can make you look older. I really even think brighter lipstick makes us look older. But, you know, sometimes you just don't care. That's your signature color and you like the way you look. Say if you have really dark hair, you might really like that. But for me, darker and brighter lipsticks, I think make me look more mature. If I want a youthful look, I love colors like this one. This is just a great every woman lipstick. It is Tom Ford Spanish Pink. This is one of those lipsticks. My mom has it and my mom is 72, almost 73, and she likes it. And she has really gotten on board with the lighter lipsticks, more casual, less maintenance, all of those things that we want at our age. And then today I took MAC Purr. Is that what this is? Yeah. And put a little bit over it just to help blend it in. But if you get a gloss like MAC Purr, you could even just use the gloss and the lip liner and it would look pretty because this has enough opacity to allow you to do that. Now, say you're not a peachy girl. This one, MAC Nymphette, is in more of the mauve category. This one looks like it has a little bit more of the gold pearl in it. But all of those, I think, are very youthful, very just user-friendly, something easy to throw in your purse or in the car. I'm trying to think if you really just want a one-and-done like the MAC Luster lipsticks, that's another one that I think is a good just throw on and go. Okay, let's move on to brows. I am not like a brows on fleek. I don't even think I thought about my brows. I know I never thought about them all through high school. Never plucked a single brow, never used a brow gel. I would say the first time I ever thought about my brows were maybe mid-20s, something like that, but I've always had lighter hair and lighter eyebrows. And then I did just start tweezing just the ones out here. So as I've gotten older, I do tend to pay more attention to my eyebrows. I do, you know, have them. My daughter does brows as an esthetician, so, so she just did them. And I do think that when you pay attention to your brows, it can really open your eyes. Like if I were not to get rid of these, it would, you know, that would take up a lot of my eye space. So that is important, I think. You don't want to have them, you know how a lot of times when you age, you'll see women that their brows get kind of unruly. You want to maybe trim them just a little bit. Nothing intense. I'm not saying laminate, microblade, anything like that. But here again, we want to bring back that youthful look by adding that detail back into our face. A lot of times women will lose a lot of their brows, even half of one or something like that. A good go-to brow product, I think. I mean, this has been with me for years and always will be. I may change up the color according to my hair color, but I love this Anastasia Brow Definer. Now, I like this much more than the Brow Wiz. I don't like I don't have time and don't even want to have time to put in individual hair strokes. Now, maybe if you've lost all of your brow hairs, you might have to do that. So I take that back. If that's the case, then you may want the thinner one. You will see what I need to do is just add a little bit of the tail on this one, lift it a little bit, and you know, just give them a little bit more color. So that's what I do with that. And then you'll go in with a brow gel of your choice and clear and just put some brow gel on there just so they'll stay in place. And it also locks that color in place. 
Okay, now to, I think, just the best and the easiest part. I would say, I was thinking about this as I was bringing everything upstairs. I would say over 50, one of the least needed products is eyeshadow. To me, eyeshadow is just fun. Eyeshadow is just, you know, when it comes to all the different colors, to me, it's just a way to have fun and maybe bring some color to your face, etc., etc. It's not that I don't like it, but I really think you can take your bronzer brush and run it through your eye and let what catches on your brow bone be your crease color and go. I think that works a lot of times. It can work with your blush and you can go. Now, if you have hooded lids, keep in mind, I had hooded lids for a long, long time and then I had blepharoplasty, but I know exactly what you're dealing with. So if you have hooded lids, what you'll need to do is put your darkest color on the outside and raise it up a little bit. Do your eye makeup with your eyes open and you will have to play with that crease color. If you're like me, I had one um, eyelid that folded in and then went out, and then I had one eyelid that just folded down. <laughs> that was fun because I had to do different things on the different eyes. But if you want a one and done shadow, I think without a doubt, one of the best shadows ever is going to be MAC Groundwork Paint Pot. It is easy to use, it's not too flat, matte it's not too sparkly it's not too gooey it is just one of the nicest paint pots or cream shadows ever and the reason i like it is notice how it mimics a shadow like this is what eyeshadow is about is bringing that contour back to your eyes when you bring that contour back then your eyes show up more, then your lashes show up more. That's what you're doing. Now, if you don't feel like, you know, messing with a cream shadow, another taupey color shadow that I like, this is the Bobbi Brown Taupe. I have used this for years now. And this one is a little bit more brown, not quite as cool toned, but I love this. Actually, I'm gonna do a little bit of this right now off on the edge of my eye there and you just blend it out i love it easy to run up under your eye these are amazing and see those colors let me blend out so we can be fair here there they are both blended out so this is definitely going to be a more warm tone the taupe so i'm trying to think i like it all I really do like this. This isn't too warm for me. And I, I don't like orangey warm tones at all on my eyes. I like this. Uh, Nude Beach is another one that's maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit more cool toned. And I would say groundwork is number one. Now today, just to add a little bit of shimmer to my eyes, one of my favorite all time shimmers is this one from Bobbi Brown. It's called Moonstone. And what makes it wonderful is it's kind of like a, it's really not a gelée, but it's, it does something different. See how far it spreads out and see how it doesn't really give sparkle. It gives that glow. So this is something that would really help. Like if you just wanted to put, you could put groundwork all over. That's basically what I did. And then I put this on the lid and, oh, I just love it. You could even put a little bit of this on your collarbone. It's just so pretty. And I think it is very, very mature women friendly. Eyeliner. Okay, so much to say. I love eyeliner. I always have. I've always worn eyeliner ever since I can remember wearing makeup. Now, I haven't always worn wing liner. That came, I think, after YouTube. I always liked it, but I probably didn't have the confidence. If you love wing liner, if you love lining, like a liner pen, which is my go-to, I would say, ooh, I do like the Anastasia Jet Cream Liner. I was just trying to think of the easiest, quickest things. It would be these roller liners. I mean, I like the Tom Ford, I love the Valentino, but these are the ones that I've most purchased and I love the most. I use the black today. Many times I'll use the brown and then just use the black at the lash line, so it's up to you. As far as like a roll-on or roll-up liner, I think 
you know, I don't think that's worth spending a lot of money. I've always liked the um, Lancome roll-up liner, and you just have to go with your eye shape. I am trying to lengthen and lift my eyes, so that is what I like to do with the wing liner. If that's not your thing, I would say at the bare minimum, run the eyeliner through your lashes. That is gonna give you more depth at your lashes and make your lashes look more full because as we know, we lose those thick lashes. They're not as dark as they used to be and they're not as long. So that is what I would say. I do think you all need a liner and even Bobbi Brown, who is not a big glam girl, uses a black eyeliner and a black mascara. Okay, mascara. Oh, this is a tough one too because some of us like length. Some of us like thickness. Some of us are like me. I want length and thickness. And if that's you, I would say bad gal bang. I tried to show you in the video, the shape of this wand allows you to get very, very up close and into your lashes. And at first what I do is I build that thickness. I try to goop a lot on there, get them kind of set up like I want, put that on there. Then I go to the other eye. Then I do that eye, then I come back, and that is when I will go and touch the tips of my lashes. Because even though I wear false lashes, I only wear like a half of a lash. I cut off three to four bunches off of the ends, and I just put lashes from here down. So I still need these lashes to blend in. I still need lashes. So this is what I like to use, and I don't wear mascara on my lower lashes. I used to. I used to for years and years, probably up until maybe five, 10 years ago. And I feel like it drags me down. I don't like the way it looks. When I am trying to get a more youthful look that I like, I want to look bright, open, glam. I just want whatever you think of. Like if you were to find the most beautiful cartoon woman. Woman, not girl. I would want to look like her. I'm just trying to bring out those features that they feature, like on cartoons. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Does that make sense? So I do like the lashes. I do like the lips. I do like the contour. I do like that dimension, but I like that brightness. And I don't want anything overpowering. I don't want it to look like makeup. So I hope some of these things helped you. I hope that it was at least entertaining. And thank you to Nordstrom Beauty for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, I'm gonna put all of their promotions down below, three times the points on beauty. Don't forget about the Nordstrom sale coming up. That's I think in July. That's, that's one of the reasons I love the Nordstrom card. And it just makes it really easy to order and return. And what else? I think that's it. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Nordstrom and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.